Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify the clip art that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture and select it, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears in the ribbon with the Format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to format the inserted pictures. Note that this Contextual tab will only appear when you have an image selected within your document. The buttons that are available in the Adjust group allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your document. In Word 2010, you can click the Remove Background button to remove the background from a selected picture. If you click this button, you will see the Background Removal Contextual tab appear within the ribbon. Word will then display the area that it will not keep in a purple color. You can then use the Mark Areas to Keep or Mark Areas to Remove buttons to change your mouse pointer into a pencil that allows you to draw straight lines that indicate sections of the picture to keep or remove depending on which button you click. You can also click the Delete Mark button to remove errant marks that you create. Now when you're ready to remove the background, you can click the Keep Changes button. If you wish to cancel all of your changes, you can click the Discard All Changes button to cancel the process. Now if using Word 2010, note that the Brightness and Contrast options have been combined into the Corrections button which also includes options for sharpening or softening the selected picture. You can click the Corrections button to select from the preset adjustment options that are shown in the Sharpen and Soften and the Brightness and Contrast sections. Also note that selecting the Picture Correction Options command at the bottom of the dropdown will open the Format Picture dialog box and display the Picture Corrections category. We will examine this dialog box in the next section of this chapter. You can use the color drop down button to select from one of the many preset coloring tints to apply it to the image. In Word 2010, you can also select different color saturation and tone levels using this button as well. You can also roll over the more variations command option to select a coloring choice from the palette of colors that appears. Now if using Word 2010, you can also click the Artistic Effects drop-down button to select from many preset artistic effects that you can apply to the selected picture. You can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your document. In Word 2010, you first select the desired compression settings within this dialog box. If you only wish to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures within your document, you would need to check the Apply Only to This Picture checkbox. Now once you have the settings that you desire, you can then click the OK button to compress the pictures in your document. 
Also note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display, as smaller graphic files tend to load faster. This will also not work with clip art, just actual photographs like JPEG and GIF files. Also if using Word 2010, you can click the Change Picture button to open the Insert Picture dialog box. You can then select a picture to substitute for the current picture without resetting any formatting or sizing adjustments that you have already made. The last button in the Adjust section is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset any changes that you have made to a picture. In Word 2010, this button becomes a drop-down button that allows you to reset either the formatting only or both the formatting and the sizing applied to the image by choosing your desired option from the drop-down menu of choices. The next group in the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how the style will affect your selected image directly in your document before you actually click on a style to select it. If you want to add a border to the image, you can click the Picture Border drop-down button and from the drop-down menu, you can then click on the color of the border that you want to use. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border, or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by using the Picture Border drop-down button as well. If you roll over the Wait command in the Picture Border button's drop-down menu, you can then select a different line thickness. Also, you could roll over the Dashes command to select a dashed line style to use versus using the default solid border if desired. Next, you can click the Picture Effects drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories that are available for use on your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over the category that you wish to view in order to display a listing of assorted styles within that category. When you hold your mouse pointer over any style shown here, it will also be shown as a preview on the selected image within your document. You can then just click on the style that you would like in order to actually apply it to the picture. Now new to Word 2010 is the Convert to SmartArt Graphic drop-down button. If you click this button, you can convert the selected picture into one of the SmartArt graphic styles shown. This allows you to incorporate images into your SmartArt and also add supplemental text. Simply select the style of SmartArt that you would like to apply from the choices shown in the button's drop-down menu. Next, in the Arrange group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected image in the document. You can click the Position button to select one of the preset placement options for the selected image. You can click the Wrap Text drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. If you have overlapping images in your document, you can click either the Bring Forward 
or send backward drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the images overlap each other within the stack. In Word 2010, you can click the Selection Pane button to toggle the display of the selection pane at the right side of your document on or off. The selection pane shows the selectable objects, such as clip art and other pictures, that you have inserted into your document. You can click the Align button in order to choose from one of the available alignment options displayed within the drop-down button's menu of choices. The Group button is not often allowed to be used in conjunction with images, but is often useful when dealing with shapes. If you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected image in your document from the drop-down menu of Rotation Choices. In the Size group, you will find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button to enable the cropping tool. To use it, click and drag on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic inward to crop it. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by dragging the cropping handles back outward again or by simply clicking the Reset Picture button that appears in the Adjust group to reset the picture back to its original state. In Word 2010, you can crop an image to fit a selected shape, or you can choose to crop an image to fit a selected dimension ratio, like portrait or landscape. To crop an image to fit a selected shape, click the drop-down button under the Crop button, and then roll over the Crop to Shape command. You can then select a desired shape from the side menu of choices that appear. If you wish to crop a picture to a selected aspect ratio, then you can click the drop-down button under the Crop button, and then roll over the Aspect Ratio command. You can then select one of the aspect ratios from the side menu that appears. You can also use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the Shape Height or the Shape Width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. Also notice that if you need to make very specific changes to the size of the image, you can do so through the Advanced Layout Size dialog box. To open this dialog box, just click the Advanced Layout Size dialog box launcher button in the lower right corner of the size group. Now on the size tab of the layout dialog box, you can enter the height and width into the text boxes provided. Notice that if you want to adjust the relational aspect, the height to width ratio of the selected image, then you would need to ensure that the lock aspect ratio checkbox is deselected in the scale section first. Then you can enter the height and the width independently if desired. In addition, you can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the rotation spinner buttons. In the scale section, you can enter a percentage into either the height and or width text boxes. The image will then be scaled by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the two available check boxes in this section as needed when making your size and scale changes. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio and to determine if the ratio used is to be based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. Also note that you can click the Reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any change made to the size of the image. Once you've finished making your sizing adjustments, click the OK button to close the size dialog box and apply your changes. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.